70s. Oh, that whoa. was a long ride in the time machine, uh, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. What? Mom? Mom, is that you? What? Oh, Dude, you guys, it's my mom. Check it, your mom. Hey, you guys, check it out, check what? it out. No. Something Dan. Going <laughs> Dan. On, right? Dan. Yeah. Lisa. Right. That's, right. that's my mom, Dan. I know, I know, sorry. <laughs> you just got no. asked up by your mom. No. What is this, Back to the Future? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's awesome. Uh, well, Jack. I see you in like 15 years. <laughs> Jack, I don't know. Your mom is smoking. <laughs> Woo. Dude, I don't, want that. To see, I don't want to see my dad, you know, sideburns and fro, right? No, <laughs> no one knows that. Well. All right, well, coming up next is Jeff Hardy's performing a George Carlin comedy routine. All right. Give it up. Give it up. Thank you. Tigers Roar, how are we doing tonight? Good to hear. Being that what I'm doing tonight is uh, kind of a George Carlin tribute, I find it suitable to pay homage to one of his more famous and well-known routines. Heido heard this joke last night. I hope, he hears it. I hope he gets to hear it again tonight. I will present to you now another seven words you will never hear on TV. And the Grammy goes to Heido Campos. All right, now that we got that awkward first joke out of the way, let's continue with the rest of the show. For those of you who know me, I like to complain a lot. I don't know, it's just my way of venting, getting things off my chest. And in my complaining, I've come up with a list of people that I just can't stand. So what I'm about to tell you is some excerpts from that list. The first of these despicable little cretins that I can't stand, people who pay for inexpensive items with a credit card. Trust me, folks, a Snickers bar is not a major purchase. You can scrounge up some, a little extra cash. And you're holding up the line, too. I'm stuck behind some guy waiting to be approved for a bag of cheese doodles. I swear the next guy in front of me who's paying for Newsweek with a credit card is getting a jar of mayonnaise thrown at his head. Now, speaking of waiting in line, you ever get caught behind those people that have like two or three cars just completely full of stuff and then you're just sitting there waiting with your three things and the old lady who got all this stuff is just looking through her coupons and she just can't seem to find them? Then you're just sitting there waiting. It's okay, you can spend the extra five cents on your bacon bits. It's not the end of the world. And then after I've been waiting for 15 minutes, they open up a lane for someone who's been waiting two minutes. And then when I go through with my stuff that takes a minute and a half, and the guy tells me to have a nice day, I just kind of look at him and go, too late. <laughs> and then I get into my vehicle and head out onto the road where we come across the next person that I think the world would just be a little bit better without. These guys that go severely, severely under the speed limit. <sighs> Can't stand it. Story goes along with this. I'm driving on Bridge Avenue, where, you know, 45 mile an hour zone. And I'm going and going, and I'm gaining on this guy faster and faster. All of a sudden, I realize I have to slam on my brakes before I even run the guy. I look down at my speedometer, the guy's going 25 miles an hour. <sighs> And then, again, I'm just sitting there waiting. See, and I would have honked my horn at the guy, but um, my horn doesn't work. Oh, well. And I'm sure if my horn did work and I had honked my horn at him, I would have interrupted his pleasant cell phone conversation, which would have made me the jerk. Oh, well, what do you do? Well, about time I get me a drink of water here. You guys think this stuff's safe to drink? Anybody? I don't care either way. You know why? Because I'm an American. I expect a little cancer in my food and water. <laughs> Let me have a few sips of industrial waste. <laughs> ah, tasty. Now, I'd like to talk a little bit about baseball and football. Starting with baseball. Baseball is different from a lot of other sports in a few kind of interesting little ways. For instance, in most sports, you score points or you score goals. In baseball, you score runs. 
In most sports, the ball or object is put in play by the offensive team. In baseball, the defense puts the ball in play, and only the, off and only the defensive team is allowed to touch the ball. In fact, if an offensive player touches the ball intentionally, he's out. In most sports, the team is run by a coach. In baseball, the team is run by a manager. And only in baseball does the manager or coach have to wear the same uniform the players do. If you could see some of these coaches that you've seen as of late in their respective team's uniforms, you would understand why. Now, I'd mentioned football. Baseball and football are different from each other in a few other interesting ways, such as baseball is a 19th century pastoral game. Football is a 20th century technological struggle. Baseball is a diamond in a park, the baseball park. Football is played on a gridiron in a stadium, sometimes called Soldier Field or War Memorial Stadium. Baseball begins in the spring, the season of new life. Football begins in the fall, when everything is dying. In football, you wear a helmet. In baseball, you wear a cap. Football is concerned with downs. What down is it? Baseball is concerned with ups. Who's up? Are you up? I'm not up. He's up. In football, you receive a penalty. In baseball, you make an error. <laughs> football has hitting, clipping, spearing, tackling, piling on, personal fouls, and unnecessary roughness. Baseball has the sacrifice. Football is played in any weather. Rain, sleet, snow, hail, mud, can't see the yard markers, can't see the players' numbers, can't even see if there's a game going on, the struggle will continue. In baseball, if it rains, we don't come out to play! <laughs> baseball has no time limit. We don't know when it's going to end. We might have extra innings. Football is rigidly timed and it will end even if we have to go to sudden death. Baseball has the seventh inning stretch. Football has the two minute warning. <laughs> in baseball during the game in the stands, there's kind of a picnic feeling. Emotions may run high or low, but there really isn't anything that unpleasant. In football during the game in the stands, you can be sure that at least 27 times you are perfectly capable of the life of a fellow human being, preferably a stranger. And finally, the main objectives of the two games are completely different. Now, in football, the object is for the quarterback, otherwise known as the field general, to be on target with his aerial assault, riddling the defense with deadly accuracy in spite of the blitz, even if he has to use the shotgun. With short bullet passes and long bombs, he marches his troops into enemy territory, balancing out this aerial assault with a sustained ground attack, punching holes in the forward wall of the defense's enemy line. In baseball, the point is to be safe and to go home. You guys have been awesome. Enjoy the rest of the show.